Hey guys, welcome back to the Farrell's Fit Podcast. Uh, I'm here today with Brendan, just me and Brendan on this one today. How you doing, bud? Doing great. Very excited to be back in the saddle with the Farrell's yeah. Fit Podcast. It's, uh, it's another crazy day in, uh, well, in LA, in America, and in the world. But um, <laughs> uh, as we were just saying before the podcast started, like the one thing we can always just go back to Milan is, is training, uh, weightlifting, uh, 225 pounds is always 225 pounds and, and fitness is the one thing we can try and the, the one thing that can that can kind of save our day <laughs> the one thing that we can kind of control even though it's harder to control right now with the with the restrictions but you know i mean kudos to you guys you've done a great job of you know taking care of people making sure they can come in and get the stuff done they need do it the healthy and right way at the city so yeah that's 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 you know that's that's our job that's what we we have to do um we have to do what you know what we can and what we feel is right and um you know our, our purpose is to as you know like provide the best possible service we can to keep people fit keep people healthy keep people strong and honestly at this point i, I find it's it's more of a, a mental thing than anything else it's just a mindset thing of like you know just giving people something to to, to focus on to to put their minds on something positive um something to you know look forward to in the day and yeah it's it's uh and i for a lot of us including myself like the fitness is the one thing that you know kind of can get you through when everything else kind of seems uncontrollable absolutely um, it's an all-encompassing thing it's community it's also taking care of your health at the same time you're hitting right. on so many different things when you get to come in here and grind it out with a few other people yeah. it's that's what it's there for it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's like it a five is. and one yeah um okay guys today i want to talk a little bit about this this new program we got coming out called high performance hypertrophy um we do have the limitless challenge coming up um and there are multiple multiple programs available during the limitless challenge um it's not a one-size-fits-all thing obviously we are all in different places we all have different experience we're all looking for different things um and this challenge in particular is not just about like fitness and, and calories and fat loss and all that kind of stuff it's very much a, a kind of like healthy healthy mind healthy body kind of kind of challenge that said of course there are different programs that are going to appeal to different people and that we're going to apply different stresses and uh, different challenges that will you know appeal to different people and, and high performance hypertrophy is going to be a very specific program that is going to appeal to a very specific uh, portion of the community um, so I want to talk a little bit today about what it's about, who, who it's for, what you can expect from it, uh, and what you would need, uh, kind of physically, the tools you would need, but also kind of the experience you would, you would need to be able to kind of endure this program successfully. Because like I said, it's, it's not for everybody. Uh, there is something for everybody, but this program specifically is, again, for a, for a specific kind of demographic um so broadly speaking the program itself if, if we were to, to define it it would be a hybrid program that is designed to increase strength induce hypertrophy and elevate conditioning now i know that sounds like a lot in one program um and you know people are going to say well why are you trying to do everything at once why don't you focus on one thing and, uh, and not on the other and you would get better results if you just you would get stronger if you just did strength and you would get better muscle growth if you just did hypertrophy and you'll get better conditioned if you just did conditioning uh, and there's certainly an argument for that but there is a very strong reason why we are doing this program in the way that we are doing it and why i believe um, for a lot of people it's going to be not only a, a very successful program but a very appealing program to a lot of people um you know using myself as an example like a lot of people who are kind of in my position so i guess the question first of all is why this program uh why did i build it the way i built it why does it exist what what is the need for it uh what, what value does it have uh now one of the one of the main things about it um is i, I i've done a lot of kind of like what you would call kind of gpp or you know, CrossFit type hybrid programs where you're mixing in a lot of stuff, throwing it together um, and trying to become the ultimate human being. <laughs> if you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, I want to be a superhero. I want to be able to do everything. So I'm going to throw the kitchen sink at it. Um, I found that most of these types of program have left me feeling somewhat burnt out uh, because they apply 
too much of a specific kind of stress uh, that overloads my my system and leaves me kind of like done. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to build something that that doesn't doesn't do that. Firstly, uh, and I wanted to build something that is more broadly applicable for a, a broader kind of base of the community. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, like I said in the description, there is a certain amount of strength, there is a certain amount of hypertrophy, and there is a certain amount of conditioning. What there isn't a lot of is very high skilled movements. So although this program is dense, it is not overly complicated. It does not require a very, very high skill set. There are some slightly more technical movements. For example, there is a power clean in there, a power clean and jerk. Um, there are some athletic type lifts, uh, but there are no kind of full Olympic lifts uh, in there. Um, there are no kind of like, you know, double unders and anything that requires like a high skill level that you mm. would need to like specifically learn a skill for and spend time learning that skill. That isn't in there. It's a lot of kind of basic movements, um, some sprints, um, compound lifts, uh, isolation lifts, um, stuff that most people who have a, a degree of training history can do. Um, it's just put together in a way that is, like I said, um, fairly high volume, uh, fairly high intensity at times. Um, it will be very challenging at times, but it is not overly, overly skillful, overly difficult to actually perform um, any of the any of the tasks that are asked of you. Although mentally it will be challenging uh, in terms of what skills you need, you don't need too many. Um, so I want to avoid people burning out. Um, I want to avoid like any kind of like high risk injury. There are, like I said, there's no like overly complicated movements. Um, I want this program to be more about health, more about longevity, um, uh, and also a lot to do with uh, motivation and, and mindset. Now, for someone like myself and for you know a lot of my clients, a lot of people who are kind of in, in my position, I'm 40. Two, I believe, right now. I, I always forget that I'm 42, 43, 41, but I believe I'm 42. I always get the ages wrong as well. Yeah. I'm 31 now. Like, the, more, the older you get, the, the, less the, the less the years seem to mean. It doesn't matter but, anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, as, as a 42-year-old man who's kind of done you know, like most things in the gym, I have come to the realization that I can't just do one thing. Like I've done like just a bodybuilding program and I've done just a strength training program and I've done just conditioning programs. And it's not that they don't work um, physically, it's that mentally I lose interest or I lose motivation or I lose inspiration or I don't feel great. Mm -hmm. um, I need that broader spectrum uh, to kind of keep me uh, where I need to be mentally and physically. Um, I wanna be able to move, I wanna feel strong, um, I want to maintain as much lean muscle tissue um, as I can uh, and build some if I can, even at, at 42 and, and obviously clean, whatever that means. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I, uh, I have found in the past that other programs either it has made me lose weight that I didn't want to lose or lose muscle that I didn't want to lose or like I said before, just kind of left me generally feeling kind of burnt out. So, you know, I wanted to build a program that is very structured. If, if you guys ever follow my program, you know that it's it's always structured. Uh, probably to some people, it's like, oh my god, when is he going to break the cycle? Uh, <laughs> and like most cycles I do, it's 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 a it's three week cycles. So for the for the limitless challenge, it will be two three week cycles. Obviously, both of those three week cycles are difficult, although one builds upon the other. Um, so the three week uh, cycle is very structured. Um, you are as always, uh, experiencing progressive overload as you go, as in the weight gets heavier or the load gets more or, you know, the reps get higher, um, whatever, whatever it may be that you're working on on that day. But it's a very thought out, structured uh, program that, that covers a lot of bases. Um, so the next thing to say is kind of like how it breaks down on a weekly basis. Because I know I've, I've talked about a lot of things already. <clears throat> I'm just going to take a drink of this. Good day. 
not a sponsor, not yet. <laughs> um, how does it break down on a weekly basis? So if I look at my, my working week, a lot, of, a lot of people kind of think like, how should my week break down? Like, I know I want to do a lot of stuff. I know what interests me. I know how I want to feel, but I don't know how to like break it down. I, I don't know how to break down my week. So if we take it down through a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday <clears throat> kind of uh, concept, and we start with Monday. On this program specifically, uh, Monday we'll be working on strength and explosive power. So it may be, uh, in fact, on this program it is a, a lower body strength day on a Monday. So I'm going to be working my my bigger compound heavy lifts um, on a Monday. So. Uh, Let's just say, for example, I'm doing heavy front squats on a Monday with some accessory lifts, um, and then I have some power output at the end with some very short, um, what I call anabolic sprints. So I've got my strength work and I've got my my power work. Um, so a fairly high, what we call CNS day, high central nervous system activation. Um, I'm I'm focusing on building strength. I'm trying to get as strong as I possibly can on a Monday. Um, and I'm including uh, a big, like I said, big multi-joint compound lifts um, that are gonna improve my overall strength as well as my central nervous system activation. Mm -hmm. And as I said, my, my, my kind of power output um, at the end. So I'm covering strength and power on that day. Of course, there are warm-ups, uh, structural warm-ups. Um, there's an aerobic warm-up at, at the beginning. Um, but I'm saying to myself that, that the main meat and potatoes of my work on this day is going to be strength and power. So that'll be my Monday. Now, that's a, a lower body uh, strength day on a Monday, uh, let's say. And then on a Tuesday, I go into an upper body hypertrophy day. So as most of you guys know, there's a big difference between uh, strength and hypertrophy. If I want to uh, allow my muscle muscles to grow. Uh, there's kind of a specific rep range and a specific intensity that I want to be working in on those days. Um, and that's what I'm going to do on a Tuesday. So it's going to be some, some upper body hypertrophy circuits uh, where again, I'm going to come in. Um, I have a warm up. I have some structural stuff to do. Um, and then I've got some uh, hypertrophy based circuits for the upper body uh, on a Tuesday. So it's going to feel like a different stimulus than the Monday. Um, I would say less of a central nervous system fatigue day, more of a kind of strength endurance, lactic acid, muscle building day, um, which I kind of look forward to on a Tuesday after the, the stress of a Monday. Um, but it gives, it gives you a nice, a nice balance in there. So, so far I've got Monday strength, Tuesday hypertrophy, and then on the Wednesday, I move in what I call like uh, an endurance slash mindset day. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, firstly, if I'm, if I'm working endurance, um, I've got obviously uh, conditioning endurance, so it's gonna be a longer cardiovascular effort. Mm -hmm. like I, I can also think about uh, strength endurance, um, to lifting something for a long period of time in a higher rep range. And I can also think about mental endurance. So Wednesday is more, more of what I call like a challenge day, where I'm really asking myself the big questions. Like, what can you endure? I'm putting myself in a really uncomfortable position. Often I'm not sure whether I, I can finish. Uh, often I don't want to finish. And I have to kind of like push through beyond, beyond the limitations that my mind might be tempted to, to, to fall into. Um, and I include these days um, because I, I think once or twice a week, it's, it's really important to, to, to get these workouts in to ask yourself, the big questions because these are these are the kind of workouts that really push you to the next level that ask the big questions of yourself as a as a human being as, as well as an athlete um, and these are the kind of workouts that that really build character uh, really build integrity uh, and really force you to dig deep and, and ask the big questions of yourself I, these are the kind of workouts that we do in here to make you stronger out there um, so I always like to include, uh, include these, these kinds of workouts because they have, um, they have extreme value, uh, not just in the gym, but also, you know, outside the gym. So that will be, uh, the Wednesday. Um, I've been experimenting with all of these workouts for, uh, the past few weeks and Wednesdays have been, 
certainly the hardest, um, probably the least enjoyable, but ultimately you kind of give you the biggest feeling of, of, of kind of satisfaction at the end of it once you've uh, once you've recovered, <laughs> should we say. But um, so that will be the Wednesday. Um, Thursday uh, we have what we call a rest or recovery day. Now, some people will do better with a complete rest. Certainly, kind of more uh, novice lifters or people with with less training experience might do better with a full rest day on a Thursday. Other people might do better with a recovery session. Now, a recovery session would just be 60 minutes of, of light aerobic work. So I might just jump on a bike for 60 minutes. I might um, go on the Stairmaster for 60 minutes. I might go for a hike for 60 minutes. I might ride my bike outside for 60 minutes. I might go for a jog for 60 minutes. Just light recovery work. I might go for a swim if you're in a place where you can swim. Um, just something to, to get the blood flowing, allow the muscles to recover, allow your central nervous system to recover. Um, this should not be a hard day. This should be you know a recovery day. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna let my body repair. I'm gonna let it rest. I'm gonna prepare myself for tomorrow for the next day because I know I'm gonna have to uh, step things up the day after. So this is the day when you, when you give yourself a bit of self care, a bit of self love, um, and uh, really pay attention to your your recovery and your and your repair protocols. Um, then I come back the next day on the Friday with um, with a lower body hypertrophy day. So I've already done my lower body strength down on Monday, and now on a Thursday I'm, I'm gonna focus more on hypertrophy. So I'm back to my kind of medium uh, rep ranges, uh, my hypertrophy rep ranges, so kind of that eight to, uh, well, eight to 20 kind of rep ranges actually on this on this program, so. Are there any specific exercises for those days that you're gonna be hitting on, or? Yeah, part, I mean, there's, more, there's certainly more isolation work okay. um, on, on the hypertrophy day. Uh, like I said, on the Monday when we do the strength work, we tend to focus more on the on the big compound lifts. Um, on the hypertrophy day, uh, we certainly focus more, um, not to say there aren't compound lifts, because there are, but we add a lot more isolation type work, trying to isolate the muscle, um, build uh, build the weak muscles, build the weaker muscles. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, like I said before, induce hypertrophy through, through very specific rep ranges on very specific exercises. Um, sometimes when you... A lot of us, when we do our big compound lifts, like our squats and our deadlifts, we will favor certain muscle groups, like you've heard of like quad dominant squatters, uh, for example. Um, sometimes you need to add in some isolation work to, to build up the other muscles uh, around the dominant muscle or you know, um, improve weaknesses or improve structural balance kind of thing. So it's designed to really, um, like I said, you know, work the muscles that may get uh, ignored when you do your yeah. when you do your compound lift or or just under de under de underdeveloped muscles you know um like i said there is a difference between strength and hypertrophy so we're, we're trying to find that kind of sweet spot between between both um in a way that doesn't um in a way that makes sense that fits into the the, the course of the week and and the cycle um it doesn't like overtrain you or it doesn't like overwork a single muscle it has balance it has structure and you know like i said it allows you to, to get the best of both worlds which is of course the goal here um the next day then after the the lower body uh hypertrophy is the upper body uh, strength and power day um so very similar to the um the the monday with the the lower body strength here i'm going to work my my big compound upper body lifts so my, my heavy bench that kind okay. of thing uh, also some so structural support work and some some power work in there again um, at the end so more explosive work more sprint type work um, stuff that's going to be high central nervous system demand uh, and um, give me that kind of uh, you know again that sensation of strength of, of feeling powerful of feeling strong and um, long term increasing our one rep maxes or you know the ability that we have to move big objects quickly um, is the goal be strong and be explosive uh, and then followed by again we have a rest or a recovery day on the sunday um there will be an option in the program to do our uh, arms race program which is uh, <laughs> as you know just uh, biceps and triceps on always a, advised yeah on a sunday um again low central nervous system demand uh, meant to be um you know, just a bit of fun on a Sunday, uh, let the body recover, um, 
by all means take a complete rest or go for a hike, whatever it is. Or if you're, uh, you know, if you're particularly concerned about your biceps and triceps, like a lot of us are, then uh, <laughs> throw that in there. But the most important thing is obviously that you don't fatigue yourself on a Sunday because Monday's coming around, coming around very fast. Um, so, you know, as you as you look at that week and you realize, you know, the, kind of like the density of it, obviously repair recovery protocols do become a huge factor. So, you know, Epsom salt baths, lots of um, mobility work, um, ice baths if you can if you can get them, uh, plenty of sleep. Um, you know, go to bed at nine o'clock. <laughs> you know, that's that's always my advice. Um, if you can, the more sleep you can get, the better. Um, I'll talk about nutrition and hydration in a second. Uh, but these sessions really um, take 75 minutes to 90 minutes. So an important thing to, to kind of cover uh, before you decide to undertake this program is you need to give yourself 75 to 90 minutes um, because there's a lot in this program. Uh, like, like I said, with, with the warm-ups, um, there is you know, a kind of aerobic warm-up at the start of all these days. Um, the purpose of which is to, you know, uh, burn some extra fat um, and uh, build that aerobic capacity somewhat. Um, but really, beyond just the fat oxidization, it it allows us to prepare mentally for the work ahead. So, I find for myself, you know, over the years, like five minute warm up doesn't really get me like where I need to be. Ten minute can have value. But I, I found like a, a solid 20 minute, like steady state cardiovascular effort, get a sweat on, get the body warm, really helps get my mind where it needs to be to, to have a successful yeah. session. You can throw like an EMOM together for a 20 minute warm up with different exercises in there to get you right. going. Yeah. This, this, this really helps me like mentally get in the place that I need to be in to, to have a successful workout. Now, you know, there might be people out there that are saying, well, can I cut that to 10 minutes? Yes, you can. Of course you can. But just know that there is obviously less of, less of an effect happening over 10 minutes than there is over 20 minutes. So, um, you know, it is in there for a very specific reason. Um, we are trying to do all of these things. You know, like I said before, we're trying to build that aerobic base. We're trying to mentally prepare ourselves. We're trying to oxidize some fat um, and, and get us you know, where we need to be to have the most successful program possible. So um, I would advise that you kind of, if you can, follow the program um, as written. Um, now, as I just mentioned, um, hydration is going to be key uh, on this program, as is um, nutrition, of course. Um, I kind of advise most of my guys to take up the, the gallon challenge. Mm -hmm. I don't have my, I should have my gallon joke yet. I, I don't have it. I just have my great thing. But so I have a, a, a gallon challenge uh, jug that I use that helps me make sure I drink a gallon of water a day. You'll be amazed the difference it makes when you feel hydrated. Um, dehydration is one of the biggest factors when it comes to underperforming or just feeling generally tired or um, not wanting to train. Um, so I would advise everybody to, 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 to hydrate and, and try and get that, that, that gallon down. Sip it through the day. It shouldn't be like trying to consume a gallon in an hour. Don't do, like, that. don't do don't, that. Don't do it. <laughs> or trying to, the worst thing is trying to consume half a gallon before you go to bed. That's the worst thing. So slip it slowly throughout the day uh, and, and try and get that, that gallon down. Uh, now, when it comes to nutrition, of course, we like uh, a relatively high protein uh, diet. I like those protein sources to come from, from real food, uh, not chemically engineered food. So... Um, I like my lean steak, I like my lean meats, my chicken, my fish, my, um, you know, some dairy, some cottage cheese, that kind of thing. But honestly, a lot of, a lot of my protein comes from, from bison, uh, beef, um, elk, that kind of thing. No protein shakes? or just... I do have protein shakes, uh, just because the, my numbers are so so high that... You yeah, know, you, I, have, you I have, have to, to supplement somehow. somehow. Yeah. Uh, but the majority of your protein and the majority of your, your nutrition in general should come from real food sources um protein shakes are convenience yeah and uh you know like i said if your numbers are high then it's something you you will likely have to do but as much as you can try and get that 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 real food down um uh medium carbs medium fats what do i mean by that well 
it really depends on the person and how how best they respond to these these two uh, macronutrients um obviously in this program especially on your kind of performance days when you have like let's say the wednesday when you have that kind of high endurance workout or when you have those high high central nervous system uh workouts um some glycogen is going to be necessary otherwise you'll just quite simply underperform so um, when I when I design nutrition for people, it always starts with the protein. Um, standard is one to one point two grams of protein per pound of body weight. Again, kind of depending on the person, and then I'll build the carbs and fats, you know, on the back of that uh, to get us the calories we need. Divided between the carbs and the fats, um, depending on you know what the person's really looking for and what I how well I think they're going to respond to to these different macronutrients. So. Um, just know that you need both um, for this program um, in, in different degrees. Um, for guys, you know, they might be having anywhere between 70 and 100 uh, grams of fat a day. Girls might be anywhere between 40 and 80, uh, to, uh, broadly speaking. But obviously, these, these are huge variations and, and, and that can change from person to person. And then the rest of the calories will be made up with, with and then carbs and fats kind of get divided through the remainder of the calories. Um, and of course, as uh, if you've listened to this podcast before, or if you've ever done like any nutrition at, uh, at Ferros, um, we find it most effective to have those carbohydrates around your training schedule. So in the meal before and the meal after training, that's when we fuel and that's when we replenish. Um, we find that to be very effective. Um, and then I prefer the fats to come kind of like later in the day, um, kind of like the, f- the meals furthest away from your training. And what's the reason for that one? Uh, so that it doesn't interfere with your uh, protein synthesis. Like if you have uh, fats and proteins together, it can slow down the protein synthesis. Yeah. So protein and carbs um, together, better synthesis. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, uh, protein and fats in the evening. Fats are great, obviously, for your hormonal health um, as well as as well as energy. But mm-hmm. um, in order to to keep our, our hormones healthy, obviously, for a lot, a lot of a lot of guys, um, you know, testosterone is is key, and, and and fats help with testosterone. So especially if we're not like supplementing with testosterone so well our hormone systems replenished in the evening too when we're sleeping so Correct. i think yeah, yeah you're right that's actually a better thing to get your fats you know before bed right or you know in the evening meal right yeah I, fi- I find that to be to be very effective um so yeah the nutrition and hydration are going to be uh, key because if you're not on point with it a you won't get the results you want b you'll feel tired all the time and so you'll just get frustrated and it's like well i put in all this work and i'm not getting the results i want more times than not it always comes down to nutrition and hydration like i've seen it a bunch of times um so it's very important that when you do a program like this you pay attention to those details it's not just about getting in the gym and doing the work that's obviously part of it but really the magic happens with the food with the hydration and with the sleep like you have to stay on top of those things to complement your workouts because you cannot have one without the other if you want to get the results that you're looking for. So there has to be that balance. I couldn't um, agree more. I mean, I don't know how I did in my younger age. The party yeah. all night, play basketball the next day or this and that. Like now if I don't get just like six, or I mean, it's Dude, I'm just depleted uh, the next day. Yeah, I, especially like at the age of my – I mean, I, I've always been bad with with uh, low, you know, low hours of sleep. But now – if if I if I do not get six hours or you know it's hard with the kid and stuff sometimes Wyatt will wake up in the night and I'll be up and then you know I get up at five so it's like some the days when I don't get six hours I feel like death like it's 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 really bad for me um, I'll, I can get through it like and I'll I'll caffeine my way the fuck through the day yes. but um, it's it's bad it's bad so um, sleep is one of the the, the biggest things when when I have a when I have a client, like the, one of the first questions I'll ask them is how much sleep do you get? Because you can't expect to, to get through a successful program without good sleep. It just mm-hmm. does not work. So, so sleep is always key. Um, so the next kind of point I wanted to kind of go on is like wh- where, did, where did this program come from? Where did these ideas come from? Um, and, you know, I wanted to kind of like a shout out to a few people um and and be like as always with programming i don't want anyone to think these are all my ideas um and these aren't like new fitness things that i've developed these are just things that i'm putting together obviously i've had a lot of influences over the years and 
um, a lot of inspiration and a lot of my education comes from other people. So a lot of the hypertrophy kind of stuff. Um, I've been I'm reading a lot of Neil Hill stuff, um, a lot of his Y3T type programming. Um, super smart guy, super interesting guy, fascinating guy, very successful guy when it comes to hypertrophy. Prepares a lot of the like, Olympia uh, Olympia guys and girls. So um, he's been a huge influence on the hypertrophy side of things. And then a lot of the like um, a lot of the strength type protocols kind of loosely based on Wendler's 531 program. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but it's a very, very good, basic, simple, straightforward, but very, very effective uh, strength program. So there are variations. It's not exactly that, but there are variations on that. And I put some like classic kind of like mindset, Jim Jones type stuff in there, Mm -hmm. which, you know, has always been a big part of my, my kind of situation um and then you know obviously this whole kind of like hybrid concept we have to kind of like take a little bit of a hat off to crossfit because you know they really did bring the hybrid athlete to the forefront of like modern um modern training Um, i don't think we can we can argue against that so you know shout out to all those people um and you know it really becomes when you're writing a program like this, it really becomes something where you're taking all of your influences, you're taking all of your experiences, and you're trying to put it together and construct something that makes sense, that one thing doesn't detract from the other, everything adds to each other, and you come up with something uh, that works. Um, And again, you could do one of these things if you are only ever interested in hypertrophy, you could just do hypertrophy and you would get like better results in terms of hypertrophy. If you were just wanted to get strong and all you cared about was getting strong, then you could just do strength and accessory work. Or if you just wanted to get better at conditioning, you could just do conditioning all the time Mm -hmm. and get better that way. But like I said before, for me, and I know there's a lot of people in my situation, they find the sweet spot is in that kind of hybrid athlete, you know, picture so i have a little bit of everything it motivates me it inspires me it keeps me interested i still get to do cool shit but i still get to do meaningful things smart things things that again add muscle make me stronger and get me better condition no i completely agree i mean as someone who's been in the gym and working out and training their whole life you know to not get bored Right. And to be doing that same thing, it's so right. hard. So I need yes. to be going in to a class every now and then. I got to be joining a program to just see and test different things. Because if not, it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, I need to go just do some regular deadlifts and, you know, this kind of system I'm working with right now. Or is it like, no, no, I need to be going in somebody who knows way much more than me. Right. Can train me and also yeah. put me in through the ringer to understand and give me new concepts to just expand my mind so I can yeah. enjoy it more. Because if yeah. not, like you said, it's, it just becomes a tedious chore going right. to work out. And you, we don't want people to do that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, honestly, long, long term motivation is, is more important than anything. Like as soon as you lose any kind of motivation, it makes it very hard to get anything done. And I like we've, I've all done those. We've all done those programs where, you know, you're two weeks into it and you're just like, oh, my God, like there's another fucking six weeks of this. Like I'm just bored. Um, so. You know, although we shouldn't just seek entertainment for fitness, mm-hmm. th- there has to at some point be a, you know, something that keeps us excited and you want to be able to like wake up in the morning and think, fuck, yeah, I'm going to the gym and it's going to be awesome. Like that's that's the sensation you want. You want to you wanna go to bed at night excited about what you're going to do the next day. So um, motivation is a huge, huge factor in these things. Um, so what can you expect in the program? Um so broadly speaking, increases in strength, uh, improved conditioning, uh, muscle growth, um, lean body composition, and all around GPP. I know, again, it sounds like a lot of things in one cocktail, uh, but that's exactly what it is. Um, if you stick to the program, if you stick to the diet, if you sleep, um, and if you kind of like go the distance in all of these areas, um, that's what you can expect from this program. Um, obviously, the Limitless Challenge is a, a six-week program, uh, which is two cycles. Um, so, you know, how much can you expect in six weeks? You know, 
if you've been training for a long time, you know like how much you can expect in six weeks. You can't expect miracles, but you can expect growth. You can expect improvements, and you can expect to get yourself kind of on the right track to move forward mm-hmm. from. So, um, you know, nobody nobody at Faros is is talking about six weeks to dramatically change your like appearance, life, anything. All we're saying is six weeks is a good amount of time to to give you a reset, get you on the right path, get you motivated, get you excited, give you education, give you knowledge, give you self awareness, you know, all of these things that are gonna mm. gonna set you up for 2020, 2021. Um and then who's it for? Um I mean really like I said before, this this isn't for everybody. I would recommend at least two years training history. So two years of training behind you. Um, you should have a good understanding of the the basic lifts um, because, you know, a lot of you guys are obviously going to be doing this at home on your own um, and you want to you want to be able to do these things safely and successfully. So I would recommend at least two years of training history. Um, again, you need to be able uh, you need to allow yourself 75 to 90 minutes uh, five times a week. Uh, you can take those two rest days. Uh, but you are going to need 75 to 90 minutes a day. So make sure you, you can afford that amount of time. Uh, if you can't, we have other programs that will be better for you. So don't worry about that. Um, and I would also add driven, like it takes a driven mentality to do this kind of a program just because it is um, it is very demanding. So it isn't something where you're like, well, I'm, I'm kind of like halfway in, halfway out like kind of it's like this is an all-in kind of program so you, you definitely have to be going and expect you to show up every day yeah, yeah. you you gotta be you gotta be like okay i'm in this for the for the hard for the hard graft mm-hmm. it's a hard hard program with a lot of moving parts and like i said you have to pay attention to the workouts you have to pay attention to the recovery you have to pay attention to the nutrition and the hydration um all will be necessary to kind of like like i said go the distance so so that's what it's going to take. Um, and that's kind of it, Brandon, unless you have any questions for me. I mean, if I could just make another statement. I mean, I know you guys, uh, you know, you said it's the next level up for the program you want to do. And, you know, Pete's going to say he's not going to burn you out because burnout is a big thing when, you, when yeah. you think you want to come back into it and hit it hard. And, I mean, if it's just tapered off, like that good 75 to 80% sometimes you say the hit of your max on a set is what we're going for or 75, 80% of your heart rate you're trying to hit, like, or your max, like, that's the flow you want to be looking for and that's yeah. where you want to be hitting in these courses. Yeah, and also like I know a lot of people, so a lot of people will be doing this program at home obviously um, and we've, we've got this like Ferris Fortress thing that we've got set up now where people can come and pick up equipment. Um, so that will help. Um, there is obviously in this program there is barbell work in here. This isn't a program you can just kind of do with a pair of dumbbells and a bench. Um, you will need other stuff. So um, if you guys out there do need uh, equipment and you're doing this program, then um, hit us up because we, we do have equipment uh, that we can get to you. Um, that's amazing. Yeah. That's yeah. great. So that, that's exciting. It's an exciting thing to add. Um, and yeah, don't be afraid to obviously reach out to me, ask me questions if you do have questions about this, this program, um, whether you should do it, whether you should not do it. Um, and yeah, I'd be, I'd be more than happy to, 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 to help you guys out and give you the information you need. Um, But that is it for today. Um, Thanks for tuning in, guys.